Elevate TV, Advancing Kingdom Lifestyle. Oh, yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. your name God oh, yeah. Jesus we lift your name on high your name on high we lift it high Jesus we lift your name on high your name on high we lift it I say Jesus we lift your name on high your name on high, we live Jesus. Jesus, we lift your name on high. Your name on high, we lift it up. Jesus, Jesus, we lift your name on high. Your name on high, we lift one more time. Jesus, Jesus, we lift your name on high. Your name on high, we sing it again. Jesus. Jesus, we lift your name on high. Your name on high, we lift. Jesus, we lift your name. Your name on high, we lift. We lift too high. We lift too high. We lift too high. We lift too high. We lift too high on the earth. We lift too high. 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 Jesus name be lifted high, be lifted high, be glorified, Jesus. Jesus name be glorified, be glorified, be lifted high. Jesus, Jesus your name be glorified, be glorified, be lifted high. Jesus, Jesus your name be glorified. Jesus, Jesus, your name be glorified, be glorified, be said Jesus. Jesus, your name be glorified, be glorified, 
of our praise hallelujah can we clap our hands one more time and shout to the Lord with the voice of triumph hallelujah hallelujah thank you Jesus quite to to praise him see we have come we have come to worship you only king of kings lion of two Bring it 
million and forever your name shall be praised your name shall be lifted high thank you Jesus come on lift our hand to him and declare these words that forever milele na milele jina lake litabaki kusifiwa litabaki kuabudiwa na kusujudiwa hallelujah come on tell him lift up your voice and tell him thank you Jesus Thank you Jesus. Oh. Hallelujah. Oh, we bless the Lord. We bless the Lord. We bless the Lord. Thank you Jesus. We will praise you forever. We will worship you forever. Only us you are. We ride forevermore Only us who are We ride forevermore They are kings They are kingdoms They are Then they are thrones On the issue of only as you are we reign forever to his kingdom there'll be no end they are kings they are kings they are kingdoms they are kingdoms they are We reign forever. We reign forever to His kingdom. To His kingdom there will be no end. Sing, they are kings. They are kings. They are kingdoms. They are Nairobi. They are kingdoms. Your mountains there are mountains and there are thrones. Yes, you are. Only yes, you are. We reign forever to his kingdom, to his kingdom.
lift your hands and pray in the Holy Ghost. sound it is an echo believer and the anointing and we looked at Zechariah chapter 4 talking about the two uh, olive trees which are depicted as sons of fresh oil we said as a believer as you push to the next level in the spirit you need a new anointing what we call fresh oil the word fresh is for the word, you know, new, uh, a newness, something green. The tree remaining green, that means remaining fresh. And we said that it's important for a believer to have the anointing. Because these are spiritual things. Ministry is spiritual, life is spiritual, business is spiritual, leadership uh, work is spiritual anything we do we need to be led by the spirit we say in Romans 8 14 those who are led by the spirit these are the sons of God if you want to be a believer who pleases heaven you need to be led by the spirit meaning you have yielded you have allowed the direction of the Holy Spirit you have allowed the spirit to take over your life 
and we read Psalms 92 verse 10 where the Bible says you have exalted my horn or my horn you have exalted like a wild ox wild ox is a picture of strength picture of strength uh, I have been anointed with the fresh oil then uh, David is a very good example of how Old Testament anointing oil was used and we said when oil was used the spirit of God came in and Psalms 89 and verse 20 the Bible says something that David uh, highlighted he said I have found my servant David with my holy oil have anointed him it's like Jesus saying in Luke 4 18 the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me are we together so David uh, and you know the story of David is in first Samuel uh, chapter uh, 10 when you talk about Saul and David let me read two scriptures how Saul was anointed how David was anointed first Samuel chapter 10 verse 6 the Bible says that the, then the spirit read uh, the verse before the Bible says verses 5 after that you shall come to the hill of God where the Philistines garrison is and it, it will happen when you have come there to the city that you will meet a group of prophets coming down from the high place with a stringed instrument and tabling a flute and a harp before them they will be prophesying after Saul's King Saul was anointed your story you go do as occasion demands and then he finds this the Bible says then the spirit of the Lord will come upon you and you will prophesy with them and be turned into another man anointing will turn you into somebody else so that's what we are pressing in this week anointing will change you will change your demeanor will change your life will change your courage everything you see I used to be a very shy person myself very shy when I was a teenager couldn't stand before anybody if, you know even when I got married I was always quiet people come to our house my wife was talking me I was not talking you'd come from the kitchen and tell me talk. Right, it's coming somewhere, somewhere. All right, it's there. So, so when the Spirit of God came upon me, I was also turned into another man and began talking. Even now, I'm talking to you. That's for me. I don't know what for you. Maybe you used to be a very broke person, but when the Spirit comes upon you, you begin to become a little bit sharp in terms of knowing things in the spirit. You are turned into another man. You begin to have discernment. Before you could not know things unless you studied and googled. But when the spirit of God comes upon you, you are turned into somebody else. And listen to me. There is still room for you to be turned into somebody else. It doesn't matter how old you are. There is still room. For you to be turned. But the problem is. Do you really want even to be turned? You are comfortable in your cocoon. You are in the egg shell. But we break it. Glory to God. So in 1 Samuel chapter 13. Verse 9 to 14. We have the story of David. Uh, I mean King Saul. Um, because David is anointed in 16. So here, Saul was trying to do priestly work to save time because Samuel was delaying. Bring me an offering, burnt offering and peace offerings here to me. And he offered burnt offering. Verse 10. Now it happened as soon as he had finished presenting a burnt offering that Samuel came and Saul went out to meet him. 
that he might greet him. Next verse. We read 14. And someone said, what have you done? He said, when I saw that the people are scattered from me and that you did not come within the days appointed that the Philistines gathered together at Mishmash, uh, then I said, the Philistines will come uh, down on me in Gilgal. I have not made supplication to the Lord. Therefore, I felt compelled and offered a burnt offering. King Saul is trying to be a priest. Someone said to you, you have done foolishly. You have not kept the commandment of the Lord your God, which he commanded you for. Now, the Lord would have established your kingdom over Israel forever. He was trying to do the priestly work without the anointing. I see politicians trying to do things and they are not ordained for those things. They are wasting their time and shortening their lives. There was an African president who was going to the mountains to try to, I think, deliver his country from what? That's, that's not your, your work. Anyway, but now your kingdom shall not continue and the Lord has sought for himself a man after his own heart. Anointing needs a heart. Write that down. Anointing needs a heart to carry and contain. This, the heart of soul could not carry the anointing for long. That's why his kingdom was taken away from him. Is your heart able to carry the anointing for many years? The Lord has sought for himself a man after his own heart and the Lord has commanded him to be commander of his people because you have not kept what the Lord commanded you. Anointing requires a certain infrastructure, requires a certain wineskin, a certain heart configuration. Anointing Charisma requires character. Charisma requires character. You can have very powerful gifts. You even cast out devils. But if you don't have proper character, you may not be doing that in the next decade. The devils will have taken over your life because of poor character. So let's develop both the anointing and the container that can carry the anointing. Are we together? You are able to forgive quickly when people wrong you because they will always wrong you anyway. Because if you keep pain and bitterness for a long time, then the anointing will stop operating. Then your growth and increase and stature will be minimized because your heart was not able to handle pain, woodings, heartaches, and uh, all those attacks of the enemy. Is your heart able to handle wealth that will come through the anointing? Because anointing attracts people. So if you are still greedy and you still not wind yourself from pleasure, then you will not have capacity to maintain that anointing for a long time. Money and wealth will destroy you. I mean, not you, somebody. Hello? So I found somebody else with a heart. I pray that each one of us will have a heart to carry in this new season in Kenya, in this new moment, glory to God. God will have a people that have a heart to carry what he wants to pour out because he's always pouring out. May we have a heart to carry this to the next decade. May I have a heart to be preaching in the 2030s and the 2040s. Glory to God. Whatever will happen in the next 20 years will not carry me away. I will still carry the anointing and still help the body of Christ. I pray for you for the same in the mighty name of Jesus. If you are promoted and given the next position as a PS in this nation, will you have the capacity and heart to maintain your testimony, your witness, or you marry a second wife? Most people are always pushing God to promote them and give them favor and anointing. Yet, they are not willing to work on their own character to carry what God is being pushed to release. That's very strong what I've said. Mark out all these powerful men and women of God in this country. Let's count them the next 15 years. Who will still be standing? 
at least Ben Hinn was still been standing 50 years. Whether his mistakes or enemies' mistakes or everything, but he's still standing. That shows the anointing found a heart. Oh Lord. And if the heart, if the Lord, Spirit of the Lord tells somebody to adjust this, you're willing to adjust. God will work with you. Because he's looking for somebody who has a broken heart, a humble heart, contrite spirit. May we be found to be those kind of people. So, only anointed works please God. If you are not anointed for something, you'll just be doing selfish ambition and pushing yourself. God anoints and pours grace upon those he has called. Are we together? If you are very keen to follow what great men and women of God have said in the past, in the last centuries, I think William Booth, the founder of the original Salvation Army, because the current one lost the direction, the original one, that was raising an army of evangelists, very powerful. I think he's the one who said God's work must be done with God's anointing. Without the anointing, you can't do God's work. Even Jesus, when he left, you know, I know there are people who say, well, this is the first church Jesus left. Let's look at scripture to find out which is the first church he left. He only left 11 scared disciples because Judas had committed suicide. And they were hiding. So he told them, instead of hiding and going back fishing, Go to the upper room and wait. Go back to the upper room and wait. Luke 24, verse 49. Go tarry. Go wait. Huh? Go but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you wait until something comes. Until you are clothed. NIV says clothed with the power from on high. Praise God. Clothed with power from on high. Anointing is a clothing. Somebody say anointing is a clothing. So, clothed with the power from on high. The anointing, therefore, oh, somebody's calling me. Don't call me now. The anointing is the act through which God sets something apart. Anointing is the act through which God sets something or someone apart. Then when you are set apart, God is keen to want to develop character, help you develop character, help you develop qualities, help you develop virtues uh, with the purpose of then God using you in the ministry. Now, but let me go a little bit further and talk about what is this anointing and what does it mean to be anointed. The original anointing or the use of the word was a practice of shepherds in Israel because you can see a, sh a sheep here. Okay, we can't bring a sheep in the lunch hour, but can you see there's a sheep here? It is looking this side. The tail is on that side. The sheep. You see the sheep is white. The head is here. So if I'm the shepherd and I'm rearing this sheep, usually little animal, I mean little insects, like little doodos, like lice, they attack the head. Have you ever noticed if you massage a cat or a dog here, it really feels very nice because it can't touch itself there. See the same thing with the sheep. So the lice and other insects would get into the wool of the head of the sheep and uh, when they get there, it will go down to the ears of the sheep with the intention of trying to kill that sheep. So the shepherd, those ancient shepherds, would then come with the oil and smear, because that word means smear. They will smear the head. Then it will make the head sleepily. When the little lice come, they can't stay stick. 
because they will fall off. It's impossible for the insects to get therefore near to the ears because they will slide off because of the anointing. Hey. May we be so anointed until demons Kayaduta, when they come over our head they will fall off. Do you see that picture? My God. So that anointing and smearing the head of the sheep meant like three things. One, blessing. The shepherd is actually blessing that sheep to live long. If you find the anointing God has for your life and you have the right one skin, the right heart to carry that, there will be no premature death. So, that anointing on the head, number two, meant protection. The sheep of God's pasture is protected. And number three, it meant empowerment. That sheep is now empowered to continue to feed and to continue to live is empowered. These are the pictures the Lord uses for us believers. So the Greek word for that anoint is krio, which means to smear, to rub with oil, is to consecrate for office or religious service and simply to anoint. So, in Bible times, in the Old Testament, I mentioned this earlier, they anointed with oil to signify the blessing or also the call of God on that life. Let me just read a couple of scriptures for that. Exodus 29 and verse 7. The Bible says, and you shall take, okay, Sasayo is right in the middle. Uh, let's read a few verses before, like two verses from verse 5. Then you shall take the garments, put the tunic on Aaron and the rope on Ephrod, the Ephrod and the breastplate and guard him with intricated woven brand of the effort uh, and verse 6 you shall put the turban on his head and put the holy crown on the turban so now now your priest amevalishwa nguo kabisa amekuwa mkurino amekuwa mbaka nini now that you can have all those clothes but this must be done in verse 7 you shall take the anointing oil and pour it on his head and anoint it Verse 8. Then you shall bring his sons, then put on tunics, and do the same for the sons, and then pour the anointing oil upon their head. Chapter 40, towards the end, because in these chapters, chapter 40, verse 7, in these chapters of Exodus, is, I mean, verse 9, sorry, is how the temple is being prepared, the materials, the items, and everything, all those chapters, until this chapter 40 towards the end, then it's completed. You shall take the holy anointing oil and anoint the tabernacle and all that is in it, and you shall hallow it, and all its utensils, and it shall be holy. You can see how they use the anointing oil to consecrate stuff. Glory to God. Huh? Second Kings chapter 9 verse 6, the holy anointing oil was used. Second Kings chapter 9 and verse 6, then he arose and went to the house and poured the oil on his head and said thus says the Lord God of Israel I have anointed you king over the people of Israel I mean the people of the Lord over Israel uh, so leaders kings were anointed this way are we together and uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 8 even the preacher acknowledges let your garments always be white and let your head lack no oil are we together so the Old Testament picture of anointing the oil is very clear. I'm just summarizing because of course time. But in the New Testament, uh, then we'll need to agree. Like we saw yesterday in James chapter 5 verse 4. When the person is sick, so sick he can't do nothing. You can symbolically bring oil uh, here chapter 5 verse 14 of James. Verse 14 says... 
when the elders come, is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church. Let them pray over him, anointing with oil in the name of the Lord. And then in the New Testament, it says in the next verse 15, that it is the prayer of faith that will save the sick. So oil was only symbolic for the prayer of faith. Then the Lord will raise the sick person up. And if he has committed sins, you'll be forgiven. This is this in the context was used for those who are in like ICU, Mahututi. Wako wagonjwa hivi kwamba hawezi kujisikia na wazee wa kicha akiguzwa na mafuta tu anajua ah wazee wamekuja. Basi anaamini kwa moyo wake kwamba viongozi wamekuja na sasa wakiomba ombi tu la imani. Praise God. Maana hawezi kujisaidia ata atasamewa dhambi zake. The Lord will raise him up. Praise God. So, uh, a person therefore was anointed for a special purpose, either to be a king, to be a prophet, or to be a minister as a priest. So there's nothing wrong with anointing people with oil. We only need to uh, ensure that there is a balance. I was talking to one senior leader in the nation in the process of us doing the crusade we are doing. And he said one time, uh, without his knowledge, the deacons in the church, uh, because of this water we, we, we place, this water, um, he, the, the deacons, without the knowledge of the leader, they put the picture of, the, of their bishop. So, you know, in the wedding, we can put the picture of the couple, right? So, and the wedding, Akuna Shida. But now the problem was in the church. So when the picture of the bishop was in the water, hey, people began drinking the water, even those who are not supposed to drink, and taking it and carrying it there. I think something told them, like the bishop has prayed for this overnight. It's anointed. So the water began disappearing quickly because now it, because Kenyans, Jesus, have mercy on Kenyans, Jehovah. So he had to, he realized people are now moving their focus from Jesus to the water. So he told the deacons, no more printing water with my image. I said, that's a mature man of God. Uh, that's a mature man of God. Imagine Imagine Within one month, he would collect millions. Because I don't know why, I think in Africa, I think foundation ya uchawi lazima to deal nazo. Because ile foundation, yani hawa wachawi wa sasa na nini, ukienda kwa lazima wakupeka muti, wakupeka kitu ya kubepa. So, it's very, our minds have not been transformed. So, if a preacher brings kakitu ya kupeana, hata watu wazima wanachukua. Ama tuatafutia kakitu kwa lancha. Apana, apana tafadhali. Let's not lose our focus. Let's make Jesus the main person. Let's keep our eyes there. Are we together? Anything that places man uh, as a focus, it will quickly end up in error. The genuine prophets like John the Baptist pointed the people to Jesus. He was only a voice, a messenger. Jesus, until Peter, I mean, John said, I must decrease and him to increase. That's how to do ministry. In the ministry that is glorifying their man of God more than Jesus is in error. Amwezi kusema imena hapo najua mana mana hapo ndiyo muna nini. There must be a balance. Are we together? So, any use of anointing oil must be in agreement with the scripture. It's not a magic potion because most use of anointing oil in the church today is like a magic potion. Yet the oil has no power. It is only God who can anoint a person to a specific purpose. So if we use oil, we only use it as a symbol of what God is doing, but it is not the main object. It's not the main thing. And therefore, for the sake of helping our people, I rarely use oil myself. There is no oil here on this altar, a big bottle. I rather believe God to just touch you or speak to you and you receive without oil because inaweza ku confuse na ichukue glory kidogo ya Yesu usemage ni mafuta 
wale mko na mafuta kwa nyumba pika nayo na ikiisha usinunue ingine anointing wachia pasta mudarudi kwa rancha wa kesho how many of you believe that's the correct thing ndio hii hola ina watu wengi kama tumekwenda na nini mafuta hapa watu wangekuwa wanapigana kwa kwa stairs wakija juu because there's a magic potion the new magic potion is scripture andika hiyo the new magic potion is scripture the word of god if the word fails nothing else will work if the word cannot do it for you anointing oil will not do for you Let me talk to the reverence. If God has not called you, a caller will not do the trick. Hello? Okay. This is your leadership conference. So, you are to have a July. In fact, July standing strong ministers conference this year. I'm looking for a place we can place a tent. Because it's going to be big. I saw 20,000 pastors in the meeting na wengine karibu ku give up na, na tukawaombea so i feel a very strong burden we have to do something yeah we have to do something for our pastors let me ask you this week can you send text to your pastor tell him you love him i mean okay there's a problem you are a woman to your pastor you love him and as a could misunderstand tell him i respect you i honor you and i'm praying for you atajua hiyo ni upendo so don't don't use the word love okay because don't confuse the public tuko pamoja wisdom is the principal thing tell you neighbor let's encourage our pastors <laughs> now when jesus left the earth what he left for us is not oil there's something he left Can you guess what he left with us? John 14 verse 16 I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. Go down to verse 26. The same chapter. But the helper the Holy Spirit. What is the helper again? The Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. He will teach you all things and bring to you to your remembrance all things that I've said. The Holy Spirit is our helper. Is our comforter, is our advocate the holy spirit feel the anointing right now kalosha zatia lift your hand let's just begin to pray kalosha zatia bada holy spirit tell the holy spirit i need you holy ghost i need you holy spirit i need you i respect you holy spirit i need you kapura bazara shere bazori bada holy spirit i need you quickly come worship team come 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 zaro shazatia holy spirit i need you shete razia baruka taya jete rabazata zata i will pray the father he will send somebody shorosa taramazoda jete razia tata that's where the anointing comes from from the holy spirit kariza daria jazoto riabata shatori abada shete razia bada zekete shazati abada Oh help her help me holy spirit help me karosha da sete taria baza shete rabazia bada yakato sharida bada satarazia bada come holy spirit i need you come sweet spirit i pray ayaya madosa in your strength and in your power come in your gentle way come holy spirit i need you 
Come, sweet spirit, I pray. Come, sweet spirit, I pray. Come, in your strength and in your power. Come, in your gentle way. Just lift your hands and make that prayer. Come, Holy Spirit, I need you. Come, sweet Spirit, I pray. Come in your strength and in your power. Come, in your power. Ask for the Holy Spirit right now. That's where the anointing is. There will be blessing. There will be protection. There will be empowerment. Father, you poured the Spirit on the day of Pentecost. And you told us Jesus is a baptizer. Paul says to the Ephesians, be filled with the Holy Spirit. As a present continuous matter exercise feel be filled with the holy spirit i pray lord in this lunch hour right now and those online and those on watching us let the holy spirit be poured out right now those who have never had an opportunity to speak in other tongues yeah i'm declaring in a minute right now receive the holy ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues right now right now be filled right now be filled right now holy jesus fill these people with the holy spirit right now right now receive the holy ghost receive the holy spirit right now pray pray in the holy ghost Ziria Shazariada, the fire of the spirit, the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Yetara Shazarabia Bada, Zigete Shazaria Badada, Yagagagagaga Satabada. Oh Jesus, oh Jesus. Oh Jesus, thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Thank you, Spirit of God. Yes, as we get out of here, Lord, go with us. Feel us constantly, continually. Go with us, empowering us, blessing us, protecting us. Thank you, Holy Anointing. Thank you, Spirit of God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Jesus mighty name we pray. Amen. Let's celebrate God. <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. We'll continue with this teaching tonight in the miracle service. Today is Wednesday 5.30. If you are able to come, it will be a blessing. Don't just stay in the jump. Come into the house of God. And let's continue with this ministry. Of course, even tomorrow. To the glory of God. Now it's time to give before we are out of here. Let's give our offerings. Let's sow in the spirit, uh, worship, and the ministry of this nature calls us to a constant moment of giving because God constantly provides for us. May you experience a constant provision that anytime there is an opportunity to give and to do good, you're not short. May the Lord bless you as you give by Mpesa. We have the numbers on the screen. And those watching online, I'm sure there is also information. And uh, whether you're local or uh, international, and those who are here right now in the presence of God, we wish you God's favor, grace, and blessing even as you go out of here this afternoon. I declare your offerings blessed. I declare you too is blessed. I declare your life will have a financial breakthrough and open doors. Enjoy favors and much grace. May the anointing 
guide you even in this area of provisions and finances even your debts being handled and sorted by the anointing of the holy spirit in jesus mighty name we pray amen, amen. god bless you drop your offering as you take your leave in jesus name and those who are giving online enjoy yourself thank you